the only local run fan run um, of the big two. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Maui Comic Con. It's also run local and by fan run. It's a big one going with Oahu and Law, run by people off the island. So if you want to support Hawaiian fandom, the Maui and Hilo shows, or Kona shows, those are the ones. So it's nice being here. Thank you for being patient with us and you know for jumping in. I didn't know who was gonna be here and I didn't know what equipment would be here. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna carry on. I'm glad so many of you showed up, um, really. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about teaching this topic before actually doing the thing. And I don't know if this will be of interest to you guys or not, but um, I thought it was pretty interesting that you asked you asked me to, to look at pendulums because um, pendulums in the physics curriculum um, don't apply to anything, right? I mean, after you learn after you learn about pendulums in physics, you never deal with it again. Right? Um, so one has to ask themselves if it's even something that you should bother teaching. And I would say that it is not so much because anybody's life or death hinges on whether or not you understand pendulums. Because the number of people who have died because they didn't understand pendulums is really small <laughs> in the history of the world, right? But it's a really great opportunity to talk about something that is, I think maybe we just assume, like everybody in this room probably assumes is true, but is becoming um, doubted in the world. And that is that in science, we work on the assumption that there is an objective reality and that it's knowable and that it works by rules that can be predicted, right? So there are whole schools of thought in the world that say that's not true. But in science, we have to operate upon the assumption that the universe is orderly and knowable. And pendulums are actually a really great topic to study to get to that point with you. Right? Um, the other thing is that when I'm trying to figure out how to go about working with something with students, I sort of had to create a framework. Because I've, I've taught science for about 30 years now, and I've taught almost all the sciences. So when you go to create your lesson plans, how do you, how do you figure out which approach to use? So I kind of have four different ways of doing inquiry. Um, some are structured, which is like, you do that a lot in biology. Right, so when you, when you go to dissect something, it's not, hey, here's a pig, go cut it up and see what you find, right? There's rules and I want you to do these things. Right, so there's skills there and there's stuff you need to interact with to understand. So it's okay sometimes for there to be lab experiences where you're just cold looking. It's okay. And that's, um, that's something that they don't tell you when you're in the teaching. Um, but then other times, you can have students kind of just work through the scientific process on their own. And sh you know, we, we do this thing called backwards gated scaffolding, where you, by the end of the, the lab, you're actually doing your own research question and doing it successfully without freaking out. Because you know, as a student, you go into a classroom and the, the teacher will tell you, oh, I want you to 